Hey everybody, I'm Todd Clippinger and welcome to the American Craftsman Workshop. Over the last few days I've made a few more adjustments uh, and modifications to my, to my dust collection system and I want to share those with you because this might give you some insight as you think about upgrading your dust collection system and it might help you make decisions for your own shop. Anyways, um, uh, I had uh, chain converted my single stage dust collector just one year ago over to this two stage setup. And that would have been in uh, September 2013. So as kind of the one year anniversary came around, I decided I needed to take care of a couple other things and I, I kind of did that. And it seemed to fine tune the system and make it better. Um, when, before I changed the system over to a two stage system, I, I had the single stage dust collector and it, it started out with actually just the 30 micron uh, bags. But when I got my sanding machine, that wasn't enough. So uh, the filtration wasn't uh, appropriate enough, so I had to go to the one micron filtration system, and that filter media would would clog up very easily. So um, uh, the nice thing about it, it was a Penn State uh, one micron filter. They have a flapper handle on the top that you can easily rotate and flap the dust down inside. Well, in about 2011, late 2011, there was an article of Popular Woodworking about Jet and their new dust collectors, the single stage dust collectors that had a cone in them, and it kept the dust, it acted as a baffle, so once the dust entered the chamber and fell down, it wouldn't stir back up and clog up the uh, top uh, one micron filter that they have. So uh, some of the guys online had been putting walks in, inverting them, and placing them in there, so they acted as a baffle in the lower chamber to keep the dust from getting stirred back up. Well, I tried it too, and I was never really impressed with the way that it worked. I didn't, it didn't seem like it really made much difference. Actually with my sanding machine, part of the problem is it makes this super light dust. Basically it's like flour. And um, uh, once it enters the, the, the dust collection chamber, it, it goes straight up to the one micron filter as opposed to falling on down. And um, I did go ahead and leave it in. I've left it in for the last few years because uh, basically I could knock the side of the dust collector once I shut it off. Um, I would knock the side of it and knock the dust down into the bottom chamber. And then I knew that it's, the baffle did work to keep uh, dust from going back on up in, and, and immediately plugging the one micron filter up again. But like I said, the real problem is the dust uh, from the sanding machine would go into the chamber and it never would fall down to begin with. It, a lot of it just went straight up and clogged up the filter. So basically I'd run for 10 or 15 minutes and then I had to stop, flap it down, and it didn't seem like that big a deal because actually after 10 or 15 minutes, I'm usually kind of restaging material and changing over to something else. And um, as, I've, as I've got more and more work strictly out of the shop, all of a sudden it became more of an issue. So I realized I needed to change over to the two-stage system. I converted to the two-stage system, left that baffle in there. And um, at some point, somebody told me, you know that baffle is really slowing the air down. You need to take it out. And uh, I kind of, I didn't believe that it would slow the air down that much, and I left it in there. Well, actually, just a few days ago, I took it out, and uh, when I turned the dust collection system back on, immediately it crushed my Rubbermaid trash can. The Brute trash can that I had as my dust collection uh, can, it, it just immediately crushed it. Well, I, I had to check because I thought maybe I had all the dust collection gates closed on my system. As it turns out, I didn't. It increased the airflow so much when I took that baffle out that it crushed the can. So a year ago when I talked about making the conversion and that the, the, the Rubbermaid Brute trash can would withstand the, uh, the, the vacuum power, the suction power off that two horsepower motor, yeah, I was wrong. Uh, with the baffle in, I had so much air resistance in there that yes, the can would stand up to it. As soon as I took it out, it crushed the can. So um, I had to make a change. I do know a couple of, um, of the refinishing places in town, and they get chemicals in these, in these blue barrels, and they're extremely tough, tough barrels in order to contain these chemicals for shipping. So anyways, they give these things away because they can't throw them in the landfill. So I went and I got one. I test fitted it. It was a little bit too tall to keep in uh, full height. 
I went ahead and cut it down. It's a little bit taller than the brute trash can. Plus it's also slightly larger in diameter. So actually for my mobile uh, dust collection car, it just barely fit in there from what I originally had. Uh, the space designed around the brute trash can. But anyways, I, um, I put a uh, wooden ring with a built-in handle on uh, as an easy way to pull it out. That also allowed for a place the lid to set on. Now the lid, as you see it, there's two pieces of wood. There's a smaller um, diameter disc on, on top of the, underneath the bigger one, which acts as the top lid. This smaller diameter disc nests down into the can and allows the, uh, the, the, the wooden ring with the handle to completely seal against the, the lid. And um, it works out really well. You can't pull these apart while the, the machine's running. And um, it's, it's been very effective. And the can doesn't crush. I can run the dust collector with all the gates closed and I cannot crush the can. Another little nice feature I put in was that I used some Lexan and put in a window so I can see the dust level as it fills up. I didn't put the, the window real high. Actually, you can see I left it down a little bit. Basically, once it hits that level, I want to empty it then. I don't want it to continue to fill on up. So I want to catch it early. Uh, basically, the more you let it fill up past the point, you want to hit it when it's a little over three quarter full and not quite, you don't want it to fill up all the way. It just makes it more difficult to take out and, uh, and it starts backing up. So basically, I'm gonna catch a little bit sooner. You know, one of the nice things about a two-stage system actually is the fact that uh, if this barrel does fill up, then it just starts carrying over into the second stage of the system. And um, uh, basically, if you, keep it, if you keep on it, then that second bag never fills up. There are a couple of situations where the second bag, uh, the second stage of your of dust collection system will fill up that bag. And number one is if you do let your first stage fill up, then it bypasses and goes on. But also I, I ran into a situation when I had the brute trash can under here. If I didn't get a good seal with the lid of the brute trash can, uh, if, it, if it didn't snap it down all the way, then the, there would be a back draft going back up the nozzle and back up into the um, cyclone. And it would keep the dust from dropping down in through the nozzle into the first stage. So the, the dust would swirl around in the cyclone, and the back draft would cause it to lift on up and go on through the cyclone and immediately just go straight on to the second stage. I, I went to empty the, the dust collect, uh, the, the brute trash can one, one time. It was completely empty, and the bag was full in the second stage. Well, I realized I had not snapped the lid on, and the back draft caused all the dust to go on to the second stage. Well, anyways, if you're ever thinking about changing your system from a single stage to a two stage, I highly recommend it. Um, those are some of the little nuances and things that I ran into. I put mine on a mobile cart. I know a lot of guys, um, they set theirs up against the wall and that's really nice. Actually, I wanted to keep my system as close to the sanding machine, the most critical machine that I need to pull dust off of. I wanted to keep it right here. Also, I have a set of French doors that lead into a storage room, which eventually will be my finish room. And um, uh, right now I've got, my, I've got materials stored in there and I've got my compressor and um, my, some, other, some of the projects, that I, uh, chandelier that I showed in the museum. Anyways, it's a storage room right now. So with the French doors, I'm only covering one of the doors and I can still get in there and so it's no big deal, it's no loss of space. And actually the cart allows me to uh, a storage space for other things like I keep my tripods and my my floor wands for my shop back here on the other side next to the bag underneath the motor uh, being mounted on the plywood wall uh, I keep my um, uh, pressure pot spray system and it's a great place to keep that to keep it from getting damaged it was one thing that was hard to find a good place to store and actually when I made this cart it turned out to be a great place to do that so the cart actually for the footage that it takes up it's in an area that I can sacrifice. It is mobile. I can break the system apart if I need full access to the lumber rack here. And once in a while I do that. So um, uh, it's not a big deal. But anyways, this turns out to be a great, a great solution here. Um, the blue barrels. If you're looking for barrels, guys, check out the refinishing places in your area because they can't throw them in the landfill and they're more than happy to give you one or two or ten. You know, they were, the, the refinishing people were trying to dump a bunch of them off on me because they're happy to get rid of them since they can't throw them in the landfill. And you'll get them for free, basically. So uh, uh, just some tips there for you. 
So anyways, uh, I want to tell you, Super Dust Deputy has been great. Um, I don't have any affiliation with Oneida and the, and the Super Dust Deputy. In no way are they compensating me. I paid for everything here with my own hard-earned money. I'm very glad I made the transition. I bought the plastic ones because actually it had an introductory price that had just come out and I decided to spring for that. And I did, I did uh, actually buy the small dust deputy for my shop vac. So there was a familiarity with the brand. There was the brand recognition. I liked what I had before and I figure if they did well with the small one, they probably figured out the big one. So they do have a steel one and they have this plastic one. I bought the plastic one during its introductory price time. And I'm, I'm not sure what the price is right now, but I paid about $180. Um, totally to convert this, my single stage collector over into this two stage system, I paid $380 for everything. That was the, the dust deputy, the, all the plywood, the casters, the hardware, the nuts, the bolts, the, all the duct work and everything. And it took a day of time. So it, if, if, you're, if you can't afford um, to, to get right into a two-stage dust collection system and you start off with a single-stage dust collection system like I did, you can very affordably later on make the upgrade. And it's a smart move, guys. And, you know, keep in mind, I made a cart, but there's a lot of guys in um, they're, they're mounting theirs on the wall. And that works out great. That's actually a great idea. But it just didn't work for my situation here. So also, um, something to keep in mind, when you add a cyclone to your system, your dust collection system, you actually add some resistance because you're slowing the air down to drop the, the heavy particles out. So that doesn't actually increase the airflow at your machines. You may, you may find that it, it doesn't increase at all and you might be kind of disappointed. Well, the fact is they slow the air down a little bit, but I made enough improvements in my system overall by adding in more hard pipe, that in getting rid of a lot of the flex pipe and um, also by mating the, uh, the motor, the blower, almost straight into the final stage of the dust collector and then all hard pipe in between the cyclone and the motor. These were all improvements that as a whole, all the changes that I made improved the system enough that I see increased airflow at the, at the end runs of the machines, at the machines. So um, keep in mind what your expectations are. The cyclone, keeps my one micron filter clean and that bag does not fill up with dust now. Uh, as long as you, you don't let your first can fill up, it won't go on to the second bag, to the second stage. And also if you got a good seal on your lid uh, so you don't have the backdraft. So keep those things in mind. What are your expectations and, and how it actually works? But uh, overall, it's a smart move to make, guys. I highly recommend it. So that's all I really have for now. I'm hoping that actually some of this information helps you guys out with some of uh, your decision making and some of the ideas you have for modifying or upgrading your, your dust collection system. And until next time, guys, be safe in your own shop. Mm -hmm.